Hello and welcome. My name is Alan and today uh, we are going to talk about the election and what it's looking like so far. Of course, there are still places that the actual full elections are not finished, but we have a good portion already. What I have put up here on screen is the AP's um, election coverage information. Now, uh, what I have showing first is the Senate. I already said I believe the Senate will hold. I don't think there'll be any real change. Um, so, yeah. Right now, there are 47 Republicans versus 46 Democrats, plus the other two seats, being Bernie and um, King. So, that is 48 to 47. And according to this, from what they've counted so far, that they've been able to call, the Republicans have actually lost a seat. But, the way things are currently looking, we're going to see, it looks like, Adam Loxalt to beat Cat Court. Catherine Cortez Masto, which will even that back out. So, again, there'll be no real, if this holds, there'll be no real change in the Senate because the ones they're still waiting for, Alaska, I mean, it's between two Republicans anyway. Um, I just pointed out Nevada. Uh, uh, Laxalt will probably, uh, right now, with 72% reporting, he's leading by 2.7%. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, and Wisconsin, Ron Johnson leads by 1.2% with 99% of the vote in. And Arizona, Mark Kelly leads by uh, 6.1% with 63% of the vote in. And in Georgia, Raphael Warnock leads by... Um, point nine percent with ninety eight percent of the vote in. So again, I predicted the Senate would hold, and if it goes as it's looking, it'll go. It'll be fifty fifty, and of course. That being the case, Democrats hold the tie-breaking vote with the vice president. Now, the U.S. House of Representatives. As it's showing them the votes they've been able to verify right now, the Democrats have lost two seats. Um... And the GOP leads right now 199 to 172. But a loss of two seats don't mean a whole heck of a lot because the Democrats were leading by, I think it was around 13 votes or so. But let's uh, dig into this here. Um... Alaska, 
has one um, candidate, which is Mary Peltola, the, the lady who just ended up winning the primaries in Alaska and everything. She just ended up gaining that seat just recently uh, because I think people were like, we're not going to really push Begich or Pelosi because those were her opponents and she ended up getting Alaska. And because of the population, that's the only uh, house seat in Alaska. Board, please. House. U.S. Senate, you, really? You're not going to go back to the map? Let's just do this then. It's going to be a pain in my butt. Anyway, as I was saying, we've got a number of other districts. Alaska looks to be Democrat. Maine, all of them so far that have been called or have went solidly blue. And the last remaining looks like it'll go blue as well. So, yeah. Um, Pingree won their seat, and then it looks like Golden will win the other seat. Uh, so, yeah. Back. Oh, forward. You're, you're determined to be a pain in my butt. I can tell already. Anyway. Yeah. And, whoops, that's the Senate map. Let me switch back to the House here. As you can see, we've got other small maps where it's light colored. Montana, this far map over here, I mean, you can see it's all red, and then it looks like this one is going to go Republican as well. Uh, he is just short of 50%, Ryan Zinke, representing Missoula and Bozeman, Montana. But yeah, let's get another seat here. Uh, Arizona is going pretty split because you've got one that's already been called as blue and one that's already been called as red. And then the other ones here, a red, a blue, and then another blue. And then you've got other... Those are the remaining houses, nine districts. Um, so it looks like there'll be two more called red and three more called blue. Which will cover your cities and, of course, the countries. And other stuff like that will be red. Although, this little section right here is going to be red as well. Because you can see it's got an outline on it. So, that's because Phoenix is such a big metropolitan area. So, it's, it's going to have its own 
it's going to have other small districts within it. Uh, you could show the same thing for, well, for uh, Los Angeles, for example. So let's dig in here. Yeah, right here. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba. Whoa. There we go. As you can see, Los Angeles has so many tiny districts because it encompasses so much space, but the density of the people there, you know, there's a lot more people per space, so those districts are going to be much more, much tinier. Now, that being said, let me pull this back up here. You know, you can see some of the more, much larger areas where it's not as dense. You have, looks like Republicans winning quite a few here. It's still very up in the air, to be fair, Colorado. Looks like Lauren Boebert did not win re-election. Interesting. Because I think she was from Colorado. I don't know what district. Let me look that up right quick. Lauren... Bobert District. Third District. Okay. Yeah, because the little story here remains unclear as Third District remains close. And it's still not called, but Frisch has a 50.9% of the vote. So he would have that over 50% magical majority. So there's runoffs wouldn't change anything or anything. So it's going to be interesting how things happen from here on out. Anyway... Let's realign here. But anyway, GOP have right now, as per the Associated Press, 199, and the Democrats have 172. With this little white portion here being the light-colored districts that have yet to have been called. And altogether, I think we're supposed to equal 438. I believe so, 438, so... <sighs> 371. So we're looking about 70 some seats remaining. But as you can see, there's a fairly equal dispersal of 
light pink and light blue. So it's still up in the air. But my prediction was Republicans will win the House. It won't be anything huge. But they'll end up winning and just have a sliver of a advantage in the House while the Senate remained in control of the Democrats. So we'll see how the House goes. Now, <clears throat> the last part of the midterms to really pay attention to is the governor races. Right now, the GOP has 24 governor uh, states governorships, while the Democrats have 21, which shows the Democrats have gained two seats. Um, now it's looking like Alaska will remain in Republican hands. Nevada will go Republican. Oregon will go Democrat. Uh, Arizona will go Democrat. Kansas. And a really interesting one. We'll go Democrat, it's looking like. And if that is the case, we will have three more blue to add to the list, given 24 and two Republicans to add to the list, given 26, which will give the Republicans only a one state lead. 26 to 24 out of the 50. Now, while not as important, let's take a look at some of these ballot measures because I am kind of curious what in the world was on the list here. Um, select a state. Alabama. Expand criminal charges where bail can be denied. Uh, allows government funding of broadband infrastructure. Requires notifications before a death sentence is commuted. Wait, what? So that people have to be notified before the the death death sentence is basically turned away from a death sentence into life or whatever. That's common sense. That's why they call you and say, "Don't do the execution. We just got word." Or are you trying to make it that they have to come in person and go, okay, I want you to commute the sentence. All right, we're going to commute it. But if they're already on the electric chair, like <laughs> the very final second type thing, and you receive a call and say, I'm looking to commute a sentence. Too late. We're already switching it on. Is, is, is that what we're talking about here? Uh, requires election law changes, removes orphans' business from the jurisdiction of county probate courts, allows property taxes for construction projects. Alabama had quite a few. Looks like they were all voted for in the positive. Alaska. 
had one ballot measure, it looks like. And it's it looks like it's going to be voted a no. Um, calls a constant uh, calls a constitutional convention to consider changes to the Alaska Constitution. Okay. Let's see what else is up here. Arizona. Uh, 128 allows state lawmakers to amend voter approved ballot initiatives. That's basically trying to take away the voters' right to do stuff. Saying, even though the voters decided on this, we don't think it's right. So, you can't do that. And so, that's what they're trying to get them to pass. Voters were like, uh, no. No. Uh, let's see. They also said no to revising election voter ID rules and no to a sales tax to support fire districts. But yes, financial aid for college students, regardless of immigration status. Yes to new limits on campaign finance. Yes, on limits to interest rates charged on medical debt. Yes, on approval requirements for ballot initiatives. On creates office for of creates the office of lieutenant governor. Oh, did they have no uh, second command for the executive office in Arizona? That's interesting. Let's see. Uh, yes, on revising rules on state property taxes, and yes, on limiting the subjects of ballot initiatives. Well, we didn't have any ballot uh, initiatives this year. Yeah, there weren't any on the ballot. I didn't see any. Which... Okay, but yeah, just verification that I did go. I went and voted. You know, it, it, it's in your hand to at least try to make your voice known through the vote in some way or another. So, but yeah. Um, anyway. That will be it for now. Oh, there's a way to show uh, further breakdowns on the voting. That is cool. Let's look at Georgia over here. You can see how each district voted for senator. And of course... All the rural districts are red, but your uh, more urban areas, Macon, Savannah, Augusta, Athens, Atlanta, they voted Democrat to keep Warnock. And Warnock's leading because that's where the majority of the population is, is in these urban centers. So, yeah. Which, I think that's something a lot of people need to pay attention to. You can't just proclaim a uh, state a certain way. Let's look at the house. My bad. I need to go up here. Virginia, it's where I live. My district is this far end district here. It's real rural, it's real red. But, you know, a, a lot of this is rural, reliable.
Republican, but of course, the parts that vote blue are the urban parts that have the larger populations. Norfolk, Richmond, I think Charlottesville's about right here, and Alexandria. So, yeah. So, Virginia is a very purple state. Much of the territory is red, but it's the urban areas where most of the people live that's blue. And the thing is, a lot of them live right up here in northern Virginia, Manassas and all that. Because they have jobs near D.C., which is like right on the uh, Maryland-Virginia section here. It It's technically within what is Maryland, but it borders on Virginia, so uh, D.C., so yeah. Uh Yeah, Morgan Griffith. He keeps getting elected. <sighs> Which, he does nothing to help the people. But, oh, he's a Republican. He better than them Democrat. Nerd, nerd, nerd. <sighs> anyway. It's hard to put up with stuff when you live in a very rural area, but you're very left. Not liberal, left. Uh, but yeah. I have no intention of leaving this area despite how it is, because I do love the area. It has a place in my heart, and so, you know, all you can do is try to fight and make things better. Anyway, that'll be the end of this episode. I kind of rambled on long enough. I'll see you all in the next episode. As always, Educate thyself, think, read, study, learn. Someone tries to tell you something you have trouble believing, ask them to cite their sources. I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, later.